We're gonna rank Drake's worst relationships ranging from bad to absolutely dreadful. So let's start by taking a look at his recent jabs at Megan Thee Stallion and his album Her Laws, which left fans scratching their heads, wondering what exactly happened between them. Megan is popularly known for chart-topping hits like WAP with Cardi B, Captain Hook, and Body, and has become one of the biggest female rappers in the game. However, more recently, she's made headlines for a more serious reason, after being shot by Canadian rapper Tory Lanez in 2020. This incident led to a highly publicized trial, which concluded with Lanez being found guilty and serving 10 years in prison. So where does Drake come into this narrative? Well, the connection could be found in his 2022 album, Her Loss, specifically in the track, Circle Loco. This bitch lie about getting shots, but she's still a stallion. The inclusion of the line, lie about getting shots, but she's still a stallion, was interpreted as a diss against Megan, since a lot of people believe she was lying when she said that she was shot by Tory, as there was no DNA evidence to prove that he did it. There's no DNA from Tory Lanez on that magazine. That lying, I told you. Didn't I tell y'all she was lying? Man, that DNA evidence is everything. Inconclusive. The entire internet was basically split into two at the time. And at first, Megan claimed that she thought nothing of the bars and that fans were just reaching. But as the number of tweets grew and media outlets exaggerated the rumors, she began to see it differently, prompting a response on her Twitter reading, stop using my shooting for clout, since when is it cool to joke about women getting shot? You rap dudes are lame, ready to boycott about shoes and clothes, but dogpile on a black woman when she says that one of y'all homeboys abused her. And when the facts come out, remember, your favorite rapper stood behind a dude that shot a female. Even Lil Yachty, who had a hand in the writing process for some of the songs on the album took to social media to defend Drake. So this bitch lie by getting shots but she's still a stallion has nothing to do with Megan. It's about women lying about their butt shots. You know, like saying her ass is real when it's fake. By this time, he was being labeled with the term misogynoir, which is a word that describes a deep-seated dislike against black women. However, we need to ask ourselves if this was truly a diss at Megan, as there doesn't seem to be much benefit for Drake in doing so. Being that he and Tori had actually developed some tension with each other back in the day, many believe that Drake definitely wasn't trying to defend him. Plus, it wouldn't be smart to risk angering a large portion of his fan base, which includes black women. The only logical explanation for this being a diss at Megan is this rumor that Drake had been curved by her sometime in the past, leading him to follow her on social media. But once Tori was actually found guilty, Megan wanted to get revenge and she did so on her song Hiss, where she had an entire verse dedicated to roasting Drake for things ranging from his liposuction rumors to the ab etching, fake accents, and of course, the part that hurts Drake the most, disrespecting his gangster image. Which is something that Drake seems to hold in high regard, as he always seems to constantly remind us how gangster he is every chance he gets. Now, Drake has yet to respond back with a track of of his own, but has recently shared a free Tory Lanez post on Instagram, which only fuels this narrative. But while Megan Thee Stallion wasn't able to take Drake's comments lightly, Ice Spice, another female artist mentioned in the album, chose to respond differently when the Six God name dropped her. When Drake included a line in his song Back Outside Boys, stating, she's a 10 trying to rap, but it's good on mute, many interpreted it as a dig at Ice Spice. To understand, it's important to note that when Ice Spice began gaining popularity in 2022, Drake DM'd her on Instagram Instagram, and their friendship blossomed after he invited her to his OVO festival that summer. Linking up with him was so cool. Like, he's mad, nice, and respectful. Um, we went to OVO Fest. This gesture by Drake got a lot of fans speculating that he was on the prowl again. However, Drake would get the short end of the stick, as it was reported shortly after that he unfollowed her on Instagram. It's been speculated that Drake unfollowed you afterwards. Do you want to tell us some tea on that? He did. I don't know why, though. <laughs> Shame on you, Drake. Shame on you. You shouldn't have done that. Many believe Drake was essentially curved by Ice Spice at some point during their day. So when he uttered these lines on his album, everyone was expecting Ice Spice to lash out the same way that Megan did. But the way she responded was totally different, as she went on to Twitter to voice that she was happy that she's at least a 10. This reaction from Ice Spice was very surprising and won her a lot of PR with Drake fans. However, it's a different story for many other women who didn't get much positive attention from being associated with Drake. For instance, since Millie Bobby Brown, Billie Eilish, and Bella Harris were all teenagers Drake has made contact with as they were at the cusp of fame, which many fans thought was sus if you catch my drift. So this definitely raised a lot of eyebrows, especially considering some of the weird things he would message to them. You know, we text, we just texted each other the other day and he was like, I miss you so much. I was like, I miss you more. What? <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa. 
Whoa! Wait, one second! The situation is even more weird with Bella Harris, who Drake reportedly rented out an entire restaurant to celebrate her 18th birthday. Although both parties deny that this ever happened, it was very odd that Bella would post this photo of both of them together with the caption, no place I would rather be. This is certainly irregular behavior for a man of Drake's age. And this celebrity outreach by Drake has become so associated with his name that even new female artists like Tyla expected him to reach out as soon as she started to blow up. Like definitely Drake, like I was low-key waiting for him because right. I knew, hey, he's gonna come, he's right. gonna come. <laughs> so I was waiting for that follow and hey, he was there. So he followed you on, on Instagram? Yeah. Really though. Now, no one really knows what Drake's intentions are when he reaches out to these women. But we've never had an incident where any of these young celebrities complain about Drake's character. In fact, we've had the complete opposite. I love him. I met him in Australia and um, he's honestly so fantastic and a great friend and a great, uh, great role model. Drake is like the nicest dude I've ever spoken to. I mean, I've only like texted him, but he's so nice. Like I Spice herself even went out of her way to clear up her relationship with Drake. We talk all the time and like I'll ask him what should I do with this or like how'd you go about this or like did you ever experience that and he'll tell me like I did this and like you should do that too because you can yeah and I'll be like you're right like period. I feel like he's, that. he gives great mental energy yeah no he really does it's like coach vibes and she also did address the misunderstanding with the lyrics we spoke about it he said that was not about me however the case with tennis legend serena williams unfolded differently but before we get into that i need to tell you guys about this video sponsor private internet access now we all know someone who's been hacked or had their personal data leaked and even drake himself was sadly a victim of this earlier this year however if he had this vpn called private internet access that probably wouldn't have ever happened for those who don't know a vpn is a virtual private network which is a powerful tool designed to enhance internet privacy and security. So why would you need one of these? Well, if you like gaming, watching shows on Netflix or Hulu, or simply value your privacy and security, then you need a VPN. At its core, a VPN creates a secure and encrypted connection over a less secure network, such as the internet. And one of its primary uses is to protect your personal information from hackers, especially when using public Wi-Fi networks, which are often not secure. A VPN can also really come in handy if you happen to be watching a specific Netflix show that's not available in your country, such as The Office, which isn't available in the US. But if you switch to a UK server, you can watch it. Also, if you're like me and you like gaming online, you can no longer fear DDoS attacks and bandwidth throttling with today's sponsor, Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access offers unbeatable VPN security with a vast network of over thousands of servers that spread across 91 countries. This ensures that you have access to unlimited content on all your devices and also that your privacy and security are always protected. Luckily for you, you guys can get 83% off by going to www.pi avpn.com slash luesta and to top it all off private internet access has a 30-day money-back guarantee with customer support available 24 7. i want to thank private internet access for sponsoring this video but now let's get back to talking about what happened between serena and drake Drake and Serena's relationship goes as far back as 2011 when Drake began appearing at all her tennis matches. He also began hinting that they were in a relationship with tweets like this, as well as mentioning her in a few of his songs, kissing her in public, and even got into a beef with fellow rapper Common, who was her ex-boyfriend at the time, leading to one of the most savage disses of that era with Drake's verse on Rick Ross's song, Stay Schemin'. Eventually, Serena and Drake went their separate ways, with Serena choosing to instead settle down with Reddit co-founder Alexis Ohanian instead. Dead. Although it didn't seem like that breakup was mutual. Since Drake would say some lines in a freestyle implying that she wasn't into him anymore, he then made it clear in his song Middle of the Ocean, where he boldly claimed that Serena's husband was a groupie. He sidebar, Serena, your husband a groupie. This line immediately got people talking, with the general consensus being that Drake is wrong for going after a married woman. But Alexis responded in the classiest way possible. The reason I stay winning is because I'm relentless about being the absolute best at whatever I do, including being the best groupie for my wife and daughter. And of course, the internet gathered to cook Drake once again. I'ma need a husband like Alexis Ohanian. Stay bitter and mad, Drake. Drake literally just jealous because he wants your wife and he can't have her. And we have to remember, this is not just a married woman, but a married woman with kids. Although when it comes to kids, 
Nothing quite compares to the relationship he had with the mother of his child, Sophie Berceau. Drake and Sophie Berceau's relationship may have been brief, yet it has eternally bound them through their son, Adonis. The duo, with Berceau transitioning from an adult star to an artist, was first seen together in January of 2017, following Drake's breakup with Jennifer Lopez. By May, Berceau was claiming to be pregnant with Drake's baby, a claim initially denied by a representative for Drizzy. However, in May of 2018, the entire world was shocked when a rapper by the name of Pusha T, exposed Drake's hidden son in his track story of Added On. A baby's involved, it's deeper than rap. We talking character, let me keep with the facts. You are hiding a child, let that boy come home. Pusha also claimed that Drake intended to reveal his son's existence through an Adidas press run, a move that many considered to be somewhat underhanded. After tons of backlash, angry fans, and deadbeat dad claims, Drake opened up about his child on the song Emotionless from his album Scorpion. Look at the way we live. I wasn't hiding my kid from the world. I was hiding the world from my kid. Then, on the song March 14th, he talked about Sophie, saying that they only met twice and that he basically slipped up. Despite this, Drake and Brousseau have embraced co parenting, frequently sharing the joy Adonis brings into their lives on their social media platforms. But what happens when Drake befriends a kid primarily to get closer to his mom? Well, it doesn't always lead to a happy ending either, as seen in the situation with Johanna Leia. In 2021, Drake and Johanna Leia, the mother of basketball prodigy Amar. Ari Bailey were in a relationship for a few months, with their relationship becoming public knowledge in July of that year. During this time, Drake took on a mentoring role for Bailey, who was gearing up to play basketball for UCLA in 2022. At one point, he even gifted Amari with an iced out chain of the owl from his OVO logo, but it was clear that Drake had ulterior motives, as not long after, he was frequently spotted with Amari's mom, Johanna. Their outings ranged from sitting together courtside at basketball games, to more exclusive engagements, such as the time they went viral for having a private dinner at the Dodger Stadium. However, by March of 2022, Leia mentioned in an interview that she was already single and exploring her option. Is, is the certified lover boy still in the mix? So that's that's done. Um, yeah, I um I mean, I'm enjoying life. When it comes to short-lived relationships, Drake is notorious for this. He had flings with notable names such as Hailey Bieber, Tyra Banks, SZA, Kylie Jenner, and many, many more. But while it seems like Drake is the one who usually rejects being in a relationship with most of these women, there's one girl specifically who Drake would seemingly do anything to have, but somehow fail to in the end, Rihanna. You see, it all started in 2009, which was a very turbulent year marked by Rihanna's very public fallout with Chris Brown. If you don't remember, Chris Brown was accused of assaulting her during the relationship, and this ultimately led to their split that year. Most people expected Rihanna to take a break from dating for a long while after this, but someone unexpected stepped in, Drake. This was the beginning of relationship drama that would last for nearly 14 years. At the time, you couldn't escape the rumors. They were seen kissing in public, and when Rihanna was asked about the status of their relationship, she flat out denied any romantic involvement, stating that she prefers hot older men and that she and Drake were just friends. Now, this could have been that Rihanna was just keeping their relationship private, which she has been known to do in the past. But Drake's lyrics in his 2010 song Fireworks seem to tell a different story. As Drake states, I could tell it wasn't love. Love. I just thought you would fuck with me. Who could have predicted Lucky Strike would have you stuck with me? Damn, I kept my wits about me luckily. What happened between us that night? It always seems to trouble me. Lucky Strike was the bowling alley that the two had been seen making out at. Drake clearly felt a strong attachment to Rihanna that she wasn't reciprocating. And he even believed she was curving him because she thought he was clout chasing. Now all of a sudden these gossip rags want to cover me and you making it seem like it happened that way because of me. And this notion was further strengthened by Drake's own statements in an interview that same month where he said, I was a pawn. You know what she was doing to me? She was doing exactly what I've done to so many women throughout my life, which was show them quality time, then disappear. I was like, wow, this feels terrible. But only a year later, he would also admit to the fact that he was deeply hurt by Rihanna, which led him to make the song. However, they would still go on to collaborate on hit songs together, like What's My Name and Take Care in 2011, which seemingly brought them closer and closer every time they performed it. At this point, everyone truly believed that they were an item, even though there was no confirmation. So much so that he even got into a bar brawl over her with Chris Brown. And he was clearly bothered by the topic every time he was asked about it in an interview. Don't ask me shit about that man when I come up there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and leave that man alone, you know? Stop preying on his insecurities, man. Cause you know, his insecurities are the fact that I make better music than him, that I'm more popping than him. And that at one point in life, you know what I'm saying? The woman that he loves fell into my lap. I did what a real nigga would do. 
and treated her with respect. From this point onwards, their relationship was pretty complicated to say the least. From Drake saying that they had their moment in 2013. We we had our, our moment and you know, I mean, um, always, always support and, and have love for her and yeah. To them being caught on yet another date in 2014. Even after their iconic collaboration in 2016 on Rihanna's song Work, Rihanna would go on to Ellen saying that she was still single. I'm single right now mm -hmm. and I just think that I just have so much on my plate that I can't even find the time to entertain a, a, a steady relationship or anything serious or even a text. But it very much appeared that she had a thing going on with Drake that she didn't want the world to know about at all. Especially after this happened at the VMAs in August of 2016. She's, She's someone, someone I've been, been in love with since, since I was 22, 22 years, years old. old. She's one of my best friends in the world. All my adult life, I've looked up to her even though she's younger than me. She's a living, breathing legend in our industry, ladies and gentlemen. Because of this, Drake was being clowned by the fans online, with people saying stuff like, a moment of silence for my dude in the friend zone. Shit was deeper than the friend zone. Felt like Rihanna treats him like an old Uncle Bill. Drake the type of guy to ask where my hug at. Although this was pretty embarrassing for Drake, he would still catch a public W only a few weeks later, as he was seen kissing Rihanna on stage while performing in his Miami concert. But this is where the Ws with Rihanna kinda come to an end for Drake. As they officially split up in October of 2016 and Rihanna would go on to state that they weren't even friends anymore in 2018 which some rumors claim was because Drake cheated on her. Although Rihanna had moved on from the relationship she would be spotted with Drake once again at his birthday party the next year. It seemed like Drake had resolved their issues with Drake being happy to see her again and when Rihanna broke up with her new partner in 2020 Drake couldn't wait to get the ball rolling on their relationship once again. Unfortunately for Drake ASAP Rocky would eventually come into the picture completely ruining any chance Drake had of building a relationship with Rihanna and opening the gates for him to get clowned by everyone once again. Fast forward to 2023 and Drake was utterly sick of everyone telling him how bad he fumbled Rihanna and he vented his frustration out on his album For All The Dogs with the track Fear Of Heights when he disses Rihanna saying, and the sex was average with you, now I'm anti cause I had it with you And I had way better bitches than your TVH The word anti is in reference to Rihanna's last album, Anti, as he implies that sex with Rihanna was mid Which is kinda weird to say about a woman you spent 14 years of your life chasing after And he would even drag ASAP Rocky into the mix, saying That man, he's still with you, he can't leave you Y'all go on vacation, I bet it's anti Antes is a popular location in Rihanna's home country, Barbados, and he hits Rocky again with I ain't pretty flacco bitch, this shit get really rocky on the song Another Late Night, with pretty flacco being a reference to ASAP Rocky's nickname. But at this point, it's pretty safe to say that Drake still has Rihanna on his mind to this day, highlighted by people's comments on his music such as Damn, Riri hurt him bad. And it's so funny how one minute dudes be sprung singing love songs and then they get burned, and then all of a sudden the pussy was whack. LMAO. These days, Drake is clearly still salty, he wasn't able to secure his relationship with Rihanna. I mean, just look at what he does when his collab with Rihanna comes up during one of his concerts. Yeah. I don't sing this song anymore, you can sing it for me. And amidst all of his many failed relationships, Drake now feels as if there's something missing in his life. It'd have to be somebody that, you know, that I get along with so much to the point that when we're separate, I'm feeling like I can't function properly without their presence. I have come across it a few times. Yeah. I've yet to be able to hold on to it uh, for whatever reason. He even had a diamond necklace made with 42 rings, each ring representing every time he thought of proposing. 